benchmarking your PC is a great way to see if it's performing how it should. And this will show you if your PC is performing at its full potential. I know a lot of gamers don't really care if their PC is performing at its full potential. As long as they're having a fun time gaming, that's what matters at the end of the day. But for more people that are a bit more tech savvy like me, benchmarking is a great way of seeing if your PC is not being bottlenecked and it's performing at its optimum performance. And I think monitoring is just as important, if not more than benchmarking. This is because you can uncover some issues with your PC, let's say, such as bottlenecks, overheating and more. And if you've got this on an overlay, you can see in real time what is being bottlenecked. So like previously, when I had my Ryzen 9 3950X, I could see that my GPU wasn't being fully utilized in a lot of games. And this showed me that it had a CPU bottleneck. This is why I think monitoring is pretty important. The program you'll need to benchmark and monitor your PC is MSI Afterburner. I did go over this in my GPU undervolting guide and if you wanna watch that, it'll be up there or there. But I went over in the video that MSI Afterburner was a very good utility for PC gamers. Not only can you benchmark your games, you can undervolt and overclock too, which I did cover in that video. So get this installed, and when you're installing it, there should be an optional feature to install, which is Reaver Tuner Statistics Server. Get that installed because you'll need this for monitoring and the overlay. Another good program I'd recommend installing as well for monitoring is HW Monitor. This will show the data for every sensor on your PC, and it will show everything ranging from temperatures, voltages, wattages, and usages and even more because it's just a very useful program to have installed and it's very useful for troubleshooting as well believe me so you've installed msi afterburner and reva tuner let's get our monitoring sorted as i've said monitoring can be very useful if you're trying to identify an issue with your pc like for instance a cpu bottleneck or thermal throttling to get this set up go to settings and then monitoring for every sensor you want overlaid, simply click show on display. This will show all the data for that sensor overlaid in game, which is, as I've said, very useful. Now that's basically the bulk of it, but there are some additional things that you can do. For instance, I like to have each group labeled properly. So for each component, I override the group name by ticking override group name. Then I'll rename it to whatever I want it to be, such as RTX 3080 or 13700K. So all of the GPU sensors will be under one label. Same with the CPU and same for the memory and frame rate. This just makes it look a lot cleaner in your in-game overlay and it just saves on the clutter and it just looks a lot cleaner. You don't need to do this part, but I highly recommend it. For the frame rate, I always enable both the FPS and the frame time figures. For the frame time, I like to have it displayed as both text and a graph. To do this, select the drop-down box which says text in it currently and change this to text and graph. This will show a graph which is like a line in your in-game overlay and it will also show the milliseconds of each frame as well, which is pretty useful in overlays. And the last part of monitoring is setting a key bind to show the overlay. I don't want the overlay to always be on my game. So what I do is I've set this to control plus home and that will toggle the overlay and just remove it and enable it as of when I please. Also, if you've got two monitors, you can load up HW monitor on your second monitor while you're playing games or being productive like video editing or anything like that to see what your temperatures are getting up to as well and even your wattages. Now all that's done, it's time to set up benchmarking, which is a lot quicker than setting up monitoring, if I'm honest. Open up settings and then go to benchmarks. First, I like to change the keybind to start recording. I like to use Control F9, but if you play a lot of Bethesda games, this is actually bound to quick load, F9 is. So I'd recommend changing that in game. But Control F9 is what I personally use to monitor my benchmarks. And to end recording, I use Control plus F10. And now would be a good time to make sure that your benchmarking text file is saved in a convenient place, whether this is your desktop or your documents folder, save it to a place which makes sense for you. And there you go, benchmarking is set up. When you're in game, simply hit the begin recording keybinds. And when you wanna stop, double press the keybind to stop recording that you've selected. I always double press, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but I just double press anyway. And this just saves it to the file and you can open the file and see what sort of data you're getting. Now that you've carried out your benchmarking, it's time to make sense of this data. The average frame rate is basically what it says on the tin. 
is the average frame rate for the duration of your test. So this is arguably one of the more useful data points as it just shows the overall performance of your PC or graphics card or whatever component you're testing. The minimum and maximum frame rates aren't really that useful. They don't convey much useful information. So I would probably just ignore these. I always do for my benchmarking. So that's what I'd recommend. But the 1% and 0.1% lows are very important data points. The 1% lows are the 1% of frame rates which are the lowest and the same with the 0.1 but it's the 0.1%. And these both translate to how smooth the gameplay is because if your 1% low is very low, your game's going to be a stuttery mess and there's going to be loads of micro stutters and the game's just not going to feel smooth. Ideally, you want your 0.1% and your 1% lows to be as close to your average frame rate as possible. This shows that your frame delivery is very smooth, leading to a very smooth gaming experience. And that's all that gamers want. They want a smooth gaming experience with no stutters or hitches. And I know that's certainly what I want when I'm playing games. So with all the technical stuff out of the way, you know how to set up benchmarking, set up monitoring, and you know how to benchmark and make sense of the data. Here are some best practices which I like to use when I'm benchmarking. If the game's got a built-in benchmark, I always use that for the most part, unless if it's a couple of games, but yeah, I digress. But if the game's got a built-in benchmark, this means that it is repeatable, and that's what you want with your data, you want repeatability. For games that don't have a built-in benchmark, I always test in the same way every time. Like in Fortnite, I like to always test around Slappy Shores, and I always do the same benchmarking run. This will reduce variables in your data and make your data more reliable as it's repeatable. So that's pretty much the video I've given. I've given. I've gave you all the tools to test and monitor your PC. So if you found this video helpful, leave it a like, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.